Hi there. Today, we're trying a wine from Germany's Ahr Valley. Um, this is uh, Meyer Nackel's uh, Grauwacher from uh, 2017, which was a rather excellent vintage in the Ahr. Um, so that's a Spätburgunder. Spätburgunder is um, late Burgundy. It's, it's a, the German for Pinot Noir, basically. Um, the Ahr Valley, one of Germany's tiniest wine producing region. I think there are only about 500 hectares of vines there. Um, and also furthest north. So it seems sort of counterintuitive that they'd be making a, a red wine when you're in a cool area and it's actually easier to ripen white grapes, you'd have thought. Um, the R relies on the fact that there are wonderfully um, steep slopes. So this is hard work cultivating these wines. And the, the, the steeper the slope, the better the sunlight inception um, and the you know, that aids grape ripening. So that enables them to get um, Pinot Noir reasonably ripe there. Nonetheless, it's quite a quite a recent specialisation, probably over the last 70 years in the R region that this has developed, producing these these Pinot Noirs. Um, and Mea Nacal, um, very highly rated winery, one of the top producers of this grape variety in this region. Um, the reason we're trying a German wine, again, I've, I've tried a few German wines recently, is that um, Two weeks ago, uh, the R suffered devastating floods, and you know people died. Uh, the infrastructure of the area was destroyed. I mean, all the, uh, something like 60 bridges down the R Valley were washed away, um, and so there's been a um, a process of restructure, of tidying up, trying to sort things out. And you know these are people who will be making their wine in September. So there's there's a lot of work to do in this area to. Um, to try and get things going again. Um, quite notably, Mayer Nakel, um, the two sisters who make the wine there, um, uh, Mika and Dörte, uh, were in their winery when the floods, flood waters came up. And the, the, the Isles are a very narrow valley and with the massive amount of flood water, the, the waters rose incredibly quickly to a stage of just six meters. And the, the two women were actually trapped in their winery in quite frightening circumstances and had to escape by sort of swimming under barrels floating in the cellars and, and kicking out a window. Um, they were found s seven hours later the next day in a tree and, and rescued from there. But, you know, things could have been a lot worse, obviously. So, um, I, you know, it's, it's not the sole example of um, people in dire straits in, in, in the R Valley, but I, I think they're... Um, uh, they're um, adventures, as it were, um, sort of highlight what devastating floods these were. Anyway, en enough of that. Um, this wine predates all that. Um, so 2017 Pinot Noir from now. Um, so let's have a look at that. The first thing I have to say about it um, is the colour. Um, this is a cool region and the colour is really very, it's pale, but there's a deep red. I don't know whether you can see that particularly well. Um, you know, so that you can see through it. It's it's not dark. It's not opaque. But it, it's quite a deep red colour. Um, smelling it. And I've got a nice big glass here just just to try and release the aromas into it, and that does make a difference. The um, the things you pick up on there. There are two sides to this. You've got a lovely vibrant. Uh, delicate red fruit. There's strawberry. There's raspberry. There's ripe. Uh, well, there's this fresh red cherry in there. But then overlaying that, there are uh, sort of earthy characteristics. Maybe a touch of toastiness. Although, and my understanding is that these are only this has only been in large barrels. Um, and then notes of truffle and forest floor. That sort of um, vegetation sort of aromas and 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 you know so very complex really quite powerful aromas there sort of lovely and clean and fresh and a lot to be smelt in there um tasting it gosh golly the first thing that you notice this being from a northerly region is that the acidity is very very good it's it's really sort of crisp on the edges of my tongue um, you're getting all those lovely, um, delicate red fruits coming through, but also there's a, a structure of fine, earthy tannins, quite a lot of them. Um, you know, the mid palate is quite drying. There's a sort of a velvety texture to it. Um, 
the alcohol not particularly intrusive uh, the bottle says it's 13 and a half and then maybe a slight warmth at the end there but really it's the acidity and um, lovely pure fruit coming through on this once you get past the um, the slight drying note of the tannins you do start to get those sort of more developed flavors the truffle the um, earthiness the forest floor um, but then the acidity is still there the, the flavors the, the red fruit comes through again and and um, gives you a lovely fresh finish that lasts for a long time it's not a powerful wine it's quite light bodied um, but lasts wonderfully well you could see you could see that going very nicely with sort of uh, lighter cold meats and that sort of thing because it has lovely acidity to cut through things there so um, yes our sympathy to all those in the R who've, who've sort of suffered this um, horrible devastation and we hope that they can pick themselves up and uh, make lovely wines again as soon as possible but um, yes if you want a chance to express your solidarity with them um, you can find these wines Manacal on, on um, Wine Search or other R Valley wines. Also, we um, published a story recently um, talking about this, and there are links to uh, in that to ways that people can help contribute to relief funds. So, cheers, everybody. Try an Alpino Noir. Bye now.